So I looked into it in uh, strict carnivores, in like cheetahs and tigers, right? Because they're, so there are animals in the wild who eat no fiber, which goes back to this idea of how, and you know, I'm just more interested in it from the academic point of view, like how could any animal exist without fiber? So um, there's one study that I know of where they fed cheetahs whole rabbit or just meat and eat, feeding the whole rabbit actually led to an increase in fecal short chain fatty acids, similar to fructo oligosaccharides compared with only eating the meat. So they hypothesized that things like cartilage could be, could act as a prebiotic, uh, not less so, you know, the hair, bones, and skin. So I, I don't know, what, what would you think? Or, or the other thing, if you're having the whole one, I'm thinking that your microbiome is being transferred as well. It's, it's almost like a fecal transfer. All right, yeah. So the other thing we have to see is um, if you put mice together in cages, yeah. they eat each other's poops. Yeah. So you don't even actually have to do a fecal transfer. You can just take an aged mice. There have been studies that have done that. And they just put them in the cages of young mice. And because they eat the young uh, poop, you already start seeing a benefit in everything that we're talking about. The fecal health is better. They're living longer. So that, that answers the question that if you're having the whole rabbit, you're possibly transferring the whole microbiome as well in yeah. there. Interesting. I'm yeah. assuming some of it is getting colonized rather than the meat on its own, whereas the meat can possibly give you some fatty acids, but... Or worse, if it's infected meat, E. coli or whatever, salmonella, whatever it may be, right? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Could, could it also be that there are, you know, so the pancreas secretes bicarbonate, which can affect the colonic pH. I mean, granted, maybe more upstream in the small intestine, but I'd imagine a large bolus would end up getting right. So could it be that for people who are eating no fiber, and again, just purely from an academic point of view question, right? So could it be that maybe the pancreas would secrete less bicarbonate May, thereby shifting the balance to a more acidic, I, I don't know. It, it could be because the other thing, uh, one of the other metabolites that we haven't touched upon is that your microbiome can convert all of these bile acids, the primary bile acids into secondary bile acids. The reason we haven't touched upon it that much is because we still don't completely understand the function of these secondary bile acids. But there's now some evidence that a few of them are actually anti-inflammatory in nature. So if you go back to your inflammatory conditions, IBD being the one where we have the maximum amount of evidence, there is link between your liver bile acid production and how healthy your gut health is. Because that's another metabolite that's not gained that much attention that our microbiome is actually even converting all of those bile acids that the liver is producing into beneficial secondary bile acids as well.